Welcome to this place and to this sacred space as we gather today for worship. Hear these words. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. We gather today to praise God and to give thanks for the opportunity we have to worship here. Some of you are still in line for our registration table. We only ask you to do that because we are living in the midst of a pandemic. And if someone in our group should test positive, we would want to be able to contact you. Only one family member needs to register so we know how many people were here and that we have a contact number for there. You'll find there any masks or any of our pre-packaged communion. Some of you may have brought your own and that is perfectly wonderful. We will bless that at later at the time. If not, there are the little pre-packaged uh, chalice and patent. The, um, the bread is gluten-free for any of you who might have a need for gluten-free. It's all gluten-free so that you will have that available to you without any um, separation at the table. We just thought that would be the easiest way to make sure we all have what we really needed in order to partake of the Lord's Supper today. As we gather, there are several announcements that we want to uh, call to your attention. Things about our service today. Being an outdoor service creates a little bit of a, a challenge to create the ambiance of worship and sanctuary. And yet today we have provided for you symbols that relate to our worldwide mission as the United Methodist Church. Um, the blanket is from Mexico. The banner, of course, came from the church in Ecuador, of which we are in mission and partnership with. The vase came from Nicaragua and was a gift from Dale Harsey. Uh, the, the green cross is also from Nicaragua, uh, excuse me, Ecuador, and the uh, chalice and patent were made and uh, sold at the 2004 General Conference in Pittsburgh. And of course, all of this is provided for by our virtual, uh, well, excuse me, our visual arts team chaired by Sam Waldrop. I also want you to take notice of the crosses here. The crosses are uh, available for us to tie ribbons around to symbolize our prayers. And each color symbolizes a different prayer. And there's a little sign at the bottom in the bucket so that when you look at it, you will be able to see what kind of prayer ribbon or what color you might want to choose. And that symbolizes your prayer. You may go to that cross to hang a ribbon for your prayers at any time during the singing of the hymns or during the singing of the solo. And, and as we continue through the service, I hope you will find that you are able to worship God um, with your mask in place, even while we're singing if possible. Um, the only time I'd ask you to remove your mask would be if you are um, uh, eating and drinking of the sacrament or speaking, as I am at this point. Um, I would right, remind you also of the announcement at the end of your uh, bulletin, which is about the uh, open door classroom. We'll be providing gifts for our confirmation class. We will confirm those students next, excuse me, on October the 18th, which is our next outdoor service. And that will also be at four o'clock and those students' names are listed there, and we will also be able to uh, provide those gifts, and I believe they have been set up, but I'm not sure exactly where, probably inside the hallway of the church. But if you send something here, if you drop it off at the church, we will make sure it gets to the correct place and at the right time it's be presented to our children and as they are confirmed in our church. I also want to share with you the... Um, the sad news that uh, Mrs. Martha Cooper, Mott Cooper, passed away last night. Uh, arrangements are being made for her services, and we just want to remember Beth and all of the family 
in our prayers as we gather today and as we continue to pray throughout the week for this family in this time of grief. Now, I need to ask if um, you all can hear me okay because I have a sound guy over here who wants to know. Everybody's thumbs up? Okay, great. Then I invite you to stand as we sing together of four a thousand tongues to sing. join me in the opening prayer found printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. O oh God of all times and places, we pray for your church, which is set today amid the perplexities of a changing order and face to face with new tasks. Baptize her afresh in the life-giving spirit of Jesus. Bestow upon her a great responsiveness to duty a swifter compassion with suffering, and an utter loyalty to your will. Help her to proclaim boldly the coming of your kingdom. Put upon her lips the ancient gospel of her Lord. Fill her with the prophet's scorn of tyranny and with a Christ-like tenderness for the heavy laden and downtrodden. Bid her cease from seeking her own life, lest she lose it. Make her valiant to give up her life to humanity, that, like her crucified Lord, she may mount the, by the path of the cross to a higher glory. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. So today we are going to have a lesson from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. So what are your earliest memories of Holy Communion? Just hold that thought and tuck it somewhere in your mind and sometime today share it with someone that you love. Maybe someone who's here at the service with you. Or maybe go home and write about it in your journal. Within this congregation there is a little girl who, to her mother's great distress, once asked me when she was kneeling at the altar for communion, can I have more bread? Her mother was aghast. 
and I handed her more bread. I hope that's her earliest memory of communion, of a pastor who showed her generosity and gave her more than she expected. My earliest memories include a recessed altar that was draped in multiple numbers of white cloths. It seemed that the sacrament itself was shrouded in mystery and it gave the entire service an ambiance of awe and holiness. As a little girl, I remember thinking, oh boy, I'll get a longer nap today. <laughs> but the thing I really liked most about those communion Sundays was that I got to go down to the front of the church with my dad where we knelt together and I can still remember how he just tucked his arm behind me so that I wouldn't lean too far back on that prayer cushion. There we received the sacrament together. And then after the service, we had another special time. You see, he was the treasurer of the church. And so after he had collected the offering, he had to collect the communion offering that was left on the rail. And so I was there to help him. I went along with him to collect that money. And as I went, I would spy those little juice cups that hadn't quite been emptied, and I would tip them up and drain them of every drop that I could. Of course, I was caught and I was reprimanded, but almost every single time we had communion, I at least got a few extra sips. Maybe I have something in common with that little girl in our congregation. But back then, like most Methodist congregations, we only shared communion once a quarter, really four times a year. Now that tradition dates back to the early Methodist church when licensed pastors were traveling across an unsettled territory in the upheaval of the Revolutionary War. At that time, only elders were allowed to preside at the table to bless and to serve communion. And so the table was closed based on the number of elders who were available. And those elders would often take months to go from place to place and to arrive at every station where there was a Methodist meeting house. Their, their visits were limited by time and by travel. Today we receive the sacrament more frequently as traditions around Holy Communion have changed. And they really have changed. In this text that I read this morning, Paul was writing to the church at Corinth about the way that they were celebrating Holy Communion because he recognized that they were not following the tradition of Christ. Yet from what we know, those Corinthians had their tradition was nothing at all like how we celebrate the sacrament today. The Corinthians would have had something more like a tailgate here today, and everybody would have shared in a common meal. And at the end of the meal, someone would have lifted up the bread and blessed it and broke it and passed it around. And then they would have lifted up the cup and blessed it and shared it with one another. Traditions change. Yes, communion traditions have changed significantly over the year. From a meal to a simple taste of bread and juice. What was handed on to you and to me as a part of our tradition does not look the way that it did in the early church. It may not even look like the way we receive communion today because traditions really do change. Our theological and our, our understandings and interpretations of Holy Communion have shifted and changed as well as our preferences and our practices. After receiving my first communion with a bread and a loaf and a cup at Spartanburg Methodist College, I never wanted to receive it any other way. 
Yet later, as I came to understand more deeply the meaning of each act of giving and receiving, of sharing the bread and sharing the cup, it seemed to me a more authentic practice, more like the early tradition of the church. But for some people in the United Methodist Church, they still prefer those, those little small personal cups and those small pieces of bread, sometimes precisely pre-cut by loving hands, other times pulled apart from a loaf of bread. And while I've participated in more than one uh, heated debate about the way we should receive communion, whether by intinction with a loaf and a cup or whether by a small glass and a simple piece of bread, what's really important, I've come to understand, is not the way we receive the sacrament, but that we receive the body and the blood of Christ and that we share in His life, death, and resurrection. Traditions may change, but the grace that is imparted to us through this sacrament will never change. Across the world today, Christian communities have celebrated World Communion in a variety of ways. They've used different kinds of bread, some breads that we would find uncomfortable to eat. They may have used different kinds of wine or juice, or as one of my church members supplied us one Sunday, juice from her scopanine vines. Some have been celebrating virtually, much as we have, and still did so today. Others gathered like us in person in different spaces, uncommon places. While we cherish our traditions and we honor and respect the sacrament, our bread and our wine, whenever and however it is presented, is an offering of thanksgiving to God for the gift of Jesus. It is, in fact, this bread and this cup that we bring, a, a symbol of our offering of our very own lives to the reconciling grace of God that was made known to us through Jesus. So yes, we do celebrate the sacrament differently today. In a parking lot behind one of the most beautiful sanctuaries in the city of Columbia. Some of you have brought bread and wine from your home, and I'm thankful. Others will share in the pre-packaged communion that we have provided here. Yes, it's different. Yet we bring these gifts with the same thanksgiving and joy to celebrate our reconciled relationship with God through Jesus Christ. We come together to celebrate what God has done for us and made possible for us in Jesus. We come to celebrate that relationship with Him that binds us to God and binds us to one another to celebrate, if you will, that relationship that binds us together as a community of faith whenever we gather in His name. Today, we come to celebrate that relationship and to give thanks at the table of our Lord. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, let us prepare our hearts for the sacred feast.
during the singing of this hymn, we will ask you to please begin to prepare your bread and your juice. After, which, after we sing the hymn, we will then share in the great thanksgiving and you will join at the end in the prayer of response and the um, Lord's Prayer. that we have as a church family. Um, Carl Evans lost his brother last night also to COVID-19, so we do want to remember Carl and Cheryl in our prayers um, as we worship together. Let us pray together. Holy God, we gather in the wonder and beauty of your creation to offer you thanks and praise for your divine love and grace towards us. You created us and formed us in your image. And though we have often turned away from your love, you never failed to keep reaching for us. You came to us in covenants, in prophets, and in the life of your holy people. Finally, you came to us as the incarnate one. You came to us fully God and fully human. You revealed to us the height, depth, breadth, and width of your love. You came to reconcile and make new, to heal and to forgive those who were separated from you by the sin of false religion or no religion at all. You came to show us that a life with you is about living in love. And when we, when we responded to you with rejection, betrayal, denial, and crucifixion, you claimed victory over the power of sin and death itself when you walked away from the tomb. You appeared to your disciples and sent them into the world in the power of your spirit. They handed on to us the lessons you taught, how you lived and how on the night that you were handed over to death, you took bread and broke it and gave it to each of them saying, take eat, this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This bread reminds us of the body of Christ that is broken for us and for the world. And after they had eaten, you took the cup, you gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from this all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. This cup reminds us of the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, God's gift of life to the world. And now I invite you to take the bread and the juice, whatever you brought from home and whatever you received. Holy God, pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. Make each portion to be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we might be for the world the body of Christ, sharing your life-giving love with all. Let us share in the feast together. Let us continue now with the prayer of response. Join me now in the prayer of response found printed in your bulletin. Holy God, renew, renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, we offer our prayers and share in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now go in the peace, love, and grace of God, the Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to share the life and love of Christ in the world. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm. 